If you're coming from my main channel, I know this video might be a little confusing to you because you're used to me trolling people or going out in public and borderline harassing them. But I, you know, I never actually harassed anybody. I decided to, you know, be a good person and give a little bit of my knowledge on video editing and kind of help out creators that are trying to start up their own YouTube channel. You know, some videos will be more detail oriented. If you need help with something specific, you can comment down below and I'll try to make a video on it. What I tend to see a lot of is people, you know, going out, shooting a video and then editing very poorly. Now, I'm not trying to shit on anybody's work by any means, but there are a lot of improvements that can be made. And I'm I'm here to help with that. One of the biggest issues that I see is that people don't have a good pace in their videos, so there'll be a long 10, 30 second clip and there will be no cuts. Cuts are one of the biggest things that keep the pace of a video either fast or slow. If your video has a fast pace, there's more likely that the viewer will be engaged and that'll keep the retention of your video a lot higher. Now, if it's a lot slower paced, then, you know, nobody's gonna wanna watch a long 30 second clip. Now, if you do have a 30 second clip and it is very, you know, engaging, then yeah, the viewer might watch it, but most of the time, if you're having 20, 30 second clips in a video, that's a 10 minute video with nothing good happening. But yeah, at the end of the day, I'm a very unsuccessful YouTuber on my main channel, and I'm just trying to give advice that I think would help, you know, in, in the long run. But yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. So there is one main key component to video editing, and that's actually organization. I can get onto organization in a little bit, but I'm gonna show y'all what y'all need to use to organize your files. Now, what I use to organize my files are these two SSDs. These are the Samsung T5 and T7 SSDs. Now, I know a lot of y'all probably have those, you know, two terabyte, $60 hard drives, but let me tell you, right now those suck the odds of those crashing are very high believe it or not this is my very first portable hard drive and i know y'all are probably like why does it look like that it's because it broke on me i didn't really drop it or anything it was always you know very taken care of in my backpack but you know one day i was trying to plug it into my computer and for some reason the port was just fucked up it's one of those weird ass like old samsung phone charger ports and i was just like why the fuck is this even on a drive besides the ports being very poorly made on these this is a mechanical hard drive that means it has the moving parts if you look inside you're gonna hear a fan you're gonna see stuff hear stuff moving things like that can break now with the solid state drives they have you know just a motherboard type thing i don't honestly know the details of what's inside but i just know there's no moving parts in a solid state drive now back to this drive right here i did have about 600 gigabytes of footage on it at the time so when it crashed on me i was very 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 disappointed now i was trying to find ways to recover everything on here and i looked up places online called places and they're all like yeah it's gonna be about 400 dollars to recover and i was just like this was a 60 dollar drive and it's gonna cost 400 dollars now obviously i didn't pay 400 dollars i went to a local place that was able to do it for 60 i got very lucky let's just say that and the first thing they told me to do is like yeah you're gonna need another drive so you know what i did i went and bought one of these ssds now i didn't buy this one i bought the t5 they're a little bit slower but these are a lot faster so at the end of the day i do recommend ssds over hard drives i know they are a little bit more expensive but you do what you gotta do you know to make sure you don't lose all your footage imagine losing 600 gigabytes of memories and footage in general that just sucks so when i did buy the samsung t5 ssd i did buy the one terabyte because at the time they were very expensive they're probably about 180 for just one terabyte now you could probably get the t7 two terabyte for about the same price on sale and in my opinion that's an, honestly a really good deal so i do recommend these two drives the samsung t5 does have about 500 megabytes of transfer speed and this one i believe is 1050 megabytes a second it's pretty fast this is fast enough for uh 4k video editing that's what i usually do for like my youtube videos and stuff like that and it works perfectly fine for me this will probably be better for like you know just regular vlogs you know 1080 footage nothing too powerful but it does get the job done so when i do fill up one of these drives i don't want to just you know throw the footage in the trash you know get rid of it because that's a lot of memories that you could lose and at the same time if i do want to go back to a clip i'm not going to have it if i delete it so one black friday i did buy this i think it's a 16 terabyte drive i do believe it is a 16 terabyte drive but it was like 250 bucks which isn't bad because you realize if you buy this for 250 it's 16 terabytes and this itself used to be 250 so it's basically like 10 times nope that's not the right math but anyways there's a lot more storage than you know you would need i probably have about half of this filled up right now which you know believe it or not is a lot of fucking footage it's probably about eight terabytes filled right now it's not the fastest thing in the world i definitely don't recommend editing off of these because they are slow and if you constantly you know use hard drives in general even the portable ones you're constantly wearing them out after you get yourself a little ssd and maybe a hard drive tower you know like i do or you can buy one of those small portable ones it's up to you but i definitely recommend something that you know can hold a lot for a long time so let's get to the actual organization part i know organization doesn't sound fun but at the end of the day it does help you out finding you know footage from way back when in, or you know just keeping everything organized so you know where everything's at and not have to scramble looking for sources like audio clips or music and stuff like that it's all gonna be together i know i am teaching the file organization and my folder itself that i use for this you know my videos and all that is not the most organized 
but it kind of gives you a good idea of how I have it set up. Let me put this in a list view for you. This is what I was talking about right here. This is where all my vlogs are. There are some, you know, vlog five, vlog five, because one was made before the other one, but this one was edited and this one wasn't. So just for this video, I'm going to be showing you how to organize files from an old previous project, such as this one right here, where nothing's split up, you know, everything's out of order, everything's everywhere. So we're going to go ahead and make a new folder. Now, in theory, this folder would be on your drive. It wouldn't be just on your desktop, but for this example, I'm just going to show you how to do it. So the first thing you're going to be doing is making a video folder. Now, this is where you'll keep, you know, 1080 footage, 120 footage, whatever you shoot in, you can separate that inside, but I'm just going to show you how to make the folder itself. So I'm going to title this as, you know, uh, video. The next one you're going to want to make is, you know, if you have audio. So I'm just going to say audio for like these videos right here. I have a mic audio right here. Also have the camera audio and I also have music or whatever but if you do want to add music you can just add a music folder itself i believe i did use a song in that folder anyways so the last thing i usually make is a sources folder so this will contain like you know pictures or whatever stuff like auxiliary stuff that i'm not going to really care to organize but it will be there in that one folder if i need to find it so i'll make the sources folder let's go ahead and start with the video folder first since it is the main part of you know a video so we're going to go down since i have all the footage right there selected usually this will be drug right off your sd card but you know for this example, I'm going to be, you know, pulling it from the folder itself. Now it's just going to copy everything over. It's not going to, you know, steal anything. So once you're done putting all your video files into your video folder, you want to go ahead and grab, you know, your audio, but I don't have any audio specifically for this video. So we're just going to ignore that folder for now. Next, we can go into the music folder. So this folder will contain the music that I used for the video, which I do believe it was, you know, one or both of these songs. I really don't remember. So we'll put both songs into that one folder. You know, next we can go to our sources folder. So this is where I'll keep, you know, like I said, pictures or extra footage or, you know, like this for this video, I had a, I believe this is an Astros game video. So I went ahead and just put that in my sources folder because it's not my actual main footage, but it is a source. Now the rest would be like these JPEG files, which are straight from the editing software that I use. Again, this is another auxiliary folder. So this one too, I believe. <laughs> oh, that's my girlfriend. Yeah. Look at her. She's so beautiful. Okay. So now I think I got all the extra footage, you know, the sources that I need. Oh, I forgot one that I need in this file. So now I do have all my sources and videos all separated out. But what I usually like to do is make a folder for social media media so if I do like export the videos I'll make a social media folder that's where you know all the videos that I chop up from my main video will go into also at the end of the day you know if this doesn't work out for you take out a couple add a couple folders you know it's all up to you at the end of the day this is just how I do it and how I prefer to have my stuff separated okay so now we're gonna talk about softwares there's three main softwares out there a fourth one now coming up which y'all might know as CapCut but I don't really use that CapCut shit because I use real video editing softwares Sorry, CapCut, unless you want to sponsor. No, I'm just playing out. No. But there are three main video editing softwares that you may know of, them being Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. Now, DaVinci Resolve is starting to come up a little bit more and more. It wasn't as known back then as it is now, but you know, I love DaVinci Resolve, so that's what I personally use. So all three of these softwares are great for content creation. I just prefer DaVinci because it caters to what I need at work and in my personal use, so I just decided to switch over. Final Cut is very good, like for starting off, if you're just like wanting to pay $300 one time and have an editing software for life that'll go on to any Mac that you get in the future, then go ahead and buy Final Cut because it is a one-time purchase. It's also pretty good for beginners. I did start on Premiere Pro because I only had a Windows computer when I was first starting up, but I do have Macs now. So when I was editing videos like two years ago, I was using Final Cut Pro. I love Final Cut Pro, but you know, like I said, it doesn't cater to what I need specifically. Now to get a little political, I don't prefer Adobe Premiere. A lot of y'all probably love Adobe Premiere, but the reason I don't use it is because it crashes too much and it's a lot more complicated. It's a lot of extra steps that I, you know, found that I don't need to be doing in that software that I could just do easily in another software. Now, DaVinci has two different versions. There's a studio version and then there's like a regular version. The regular version is absolutely free. So if you want a free option to edit off of, use DaVinci because why not? It's free. There is a $300 paywall for the studio version, but uh, I got the work, so I don't have to worry about it. If y'all want to buy DaVinci for $300 one-time purchase, you, literally it's all you need. Now, a lot of y'all do know Premiere Pro has a paywall monthly, which kind of sucks. I think for students, it'll be about $21 a month. And then if you're not a student, it'll be like $55 a month. So something stupid, but that's like for the whole suite, which I do recommend if you're going to be doing YouTube, because you could use Photoshop, Illustrator, all that to make thumbnails. Uh, you could use Adobe Audition, which is what I'm using to record audio on this mic, which you're not even gonna probably hear at the same time it's always good to have the whole suite now i do pay for adobe premiere suite as well 
because I am a student, but after a year of being a student, it does start charging you $30 a month, which isn't as bad as paying 55, but still is very stupid. But if you're like me and you like using Macs, I'm gonna give you a little bit of secret sauce. You didn't hear this from me, but if you do go to Apple education pricings year round, you could get a little discount on your uh, MacBook or whatever. And I've heard through the grapevine that they don't even check for verification. So you could just, you know, get that MacBook for a discount if you wanted to. Another thing about the Apple education bundle is that you also get the pro apps bundle which comes with motion final cut pro what, what are the other ones logic pro a bunch of apple softwares final cut pro itself is 300 you're gonna get about 600 plus dollars worth of software for just 200 bucks and i recommend doing that if you love final cut pro just a quick difference between the three softwares is final cut pro is mac only adobe premiere does work with, in conjunction with all the other adobe suite products so you can just import all the files into the premiere pro very easily so that is a plus and for division Vinci, the color grading is immaculate. I love color grading. This video is going to be color graded. So yeah, if you want to color grade, use DaVinci. Just a heads up, adding color grades to your video does make a difference. Nobody wants to see this fucking weak ass MOV files straight out the camera uploaded to, you know, a YouTube video. So now I'm going to be showing you how to import your files into your video project. Now the importing process is pretty similar on all three softwares, but the first few steps I'm about to show you right now are DaVinci only. After you import on the other softwares, you can just go to this timestamp and you can continue the video. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up DaVinci. So actually before you create a database like this, you're going to want to make a folder inside your SSD. So what I usually do is I'll name this one DaVinci resolve and then i'll put in parentheses don't delete you don't want to delete this folder because it is going to contain all your project files and if you delete that you lost all your projects so now once you have this folder made you can just close out the finder you know add project library we can name this one vlogs 2 we'll go to browse and then you're going to want to find that folder that you just created and then you're going to want to open up your library inside of there and click create now once you have that open it's going to show an untitled project it's always going to be there so don't be like why is this here it's just going to constantly be there no matter what so what i like to do is create folders so if i go to my vlogs file my actual one i have one for my main channel and one for this channel so going back to this since we're only using one channel and i want to just you know make a vlog on here okay, so the first thing you want to do is create a new project we can name this one vlog one just for now once it opens up you're gonna have this wild looking setup now this is a speed editor i prefer not to use a speed editor because you know it's a lot better if you have the little board that you can twist the knobs and press the buttons i don't have that shit because it's expensive so i'm just gonna go to the edit page there are uh, seven different pages this is gonna be the media pool which i don't really use to import but you can if you want to you just kind of click and drag your files into here this is the speed page you know you can quickly edit just cuts nothing crazy uh this is the editing page just where all my magic happens then a fusion page which if you're familiar with after effects this is a pretty similar uh, software just node based rather than layer based then we get to the beautiful color page i love this page it helps out a lot makes the videos pop a lot more just sexy next we have the fairlight tab which is uh basically the audio editing part of things if you want to like tweak your audio your eq this and that i don't know much about audio it's basically in all in one software you're basically getting the entire adobe suite into one software but not adobe and then last is where the magic exports this is going to be the export page you know you set your settings and then you can export your video from here let's go back to the edit page the first thing you want to do is set up your timeline settings i personally use a 3840 by 1920 which gives you a two two by one ratio and it fills up the entire phone screen from the notch all the way almost to the bottom of the phone if you look at your iphone right now and if it's an iphone 10 and up you'll see exactly what i mean if not it's going to be a normal 16 by 9 and i'll show you what that also looks like right now it kind of looks boring so once you put in your timeline resolution you can put your frame rate as i usually put it at 24 23 9 7, uh, 7 6 and then it'll do that for your playback again you don't have to use this if you don't like it you can just select any of these presets or you can just do 1920 by 1080 which is a normal standard youtube video i don't usually mess with any of this because it's a little uh too you know big for my britches i don't understand any of this shit down here so i just click save yep change can not undo it and i'm telling y'all i'm not a professional but i'm a professional i do it professionally but i don't know what the fuck i'm doing at the same time i'm just trying to give y'all my advice from what i've learned through the past four or five years of editing so now that we do have our timeline set we can import our footage so the first thing you want to do is go to file and then we'll go down to import and then go to media now there are two ways that i usually do this and this is not the way i normally do it but i'll show you all this way just in case so once you have your folder selected um i just happen to have it on this folder because that's what i want to use as the example i select all the footage i want and then click open Don't 
don't change frame rate and now all your footage will appear here now you can look at it as a list view or you can go down to an icon view which i typically prefer so i can see the footage right there in front of me now if i was using something with names and i have everything laid out you can go to a metadata view and it'll show you usually the uh the file name and then it'll show you like how long it is if you use time code this and that whatever so now all this footage is shot in s log so it does kind of look kind of weird but you know at the end of the day color grading is key and then you know you fix it from there now that is the one way to do it but there also is a better way to do it and i personally love this way because it's just so much easier so first thing you want to do is go to your files locate the folder it's gonna be right here so i'll select all of these and you may notice there is an untitled folder and you're like why didn't you import that the first time one because it didn't it wouldn't let me secondly because if i do it this way and let's say i have multiple folders like the you know the audio video folder like we had earlier we just drag that all right here and now it's going to have that one folder there and it's going to have this folder right here now this is going to be your master folder which has all your things so let's say if you had 10 folders but no clips out it's going to show all 10 clips right there or sorry all 10 folders so now this is your master file so this is going to show all your folders then you can go down to each one and look into them or you can just click on them and it'll show up like that so now once we have everything imported like this we can grab a clip let's say this one for example i believe this is the intro to the video of my lord eric video which never got uploaded but uh i'm just gonna show you how to do you know in and out points because that's how you can select which part of the clip you want to do so where i'm gonna start on this clip is gonna be about right there i'm gonna click i and you know i'm just gonna select a random out point for now but if i did know which part of the video it was gonna be in you can select that out point there so once you have selected your in and out points you can just drag the entire video file to your timeline and then you can start cutting from there now if there is an easier way if you want you can just drag out these in and out points have the entire clip bring the entire clip down and then you can start cutting from there which can be a lot easier for people so now that i got my file imported we can play it and we can listen for you know places to cut so right there is gonna be the first place you're gonna to want to cut because there is dead space so what i usually do is i have my keybind set like final cut pros so it'll be c to cut and i'll cut the audio and the video you click both so after you cut you can select both the video and audio and click backspace and it'll delete the clip so after you delete the footage you can right click right here and then click ripple delete and then you could do the same thing for the audio clip to make sure it stays together now to prevent that from happening what you can do is you can select both of your clips you can link them together now when you click right here and click delete it will ripple delete them together so now that you cut the dead space out at the beginning you want to make sure you watch through the entire clip and cut out all the extra pauses the uhs the ums you know stuff like that just to keep the viewer engaged all right guys i know i've been gone for a while uh my camera fucked up it broke I so i do have an uh there gone for a while so we'll cut right there and then go back to where he says my cut there and so the commands i use for this is command b command b cuts through the entire audio and video clip if you don't have that set to yours you can go over here to, to davinci resolve go to keyboard customization and you can select uh, whatever keybind you want to create you can use mine i might put them down below if jersey lets me but if not then uh you gotta figure them out yourself but now we can go back and cut the uh out so now we play back the clip on for a while my camera fucked up it broke. i had to go sit in to get fixed because the mic wouldn't work like every time i stuck it in the hole was loose it was so like there's a, a pause there so what we do is we go to the end of that was loose Last word we can drag the play head back a little bit or we can do the arrow keys to go back frame by frame if i zoom in let's see i'm right at the ed edge of the dialogue so i don't want to cut there so i go over one cut by using command b and then i let it play it and then i go back to the beginning of the dialogue command b make sure i don't cut the actual dialogue itself if you expand the tracks you can see where the actual audio starts was loose zoom in i realized i did cut some of the dialogue so what we can do bring it there just drag it literally just click and drag now we can zoom back out shrink these down a little bit again how i zoom out is i press option scroll wheel up and down so once we select it i have a keybind set to ripple delete so i use my keybind and it ripple deletes and the hole was loose it was like a prostitute from bissonette it, it just would not stay in there so there's another pause right here it would not stay in there cut uh, uh, cut uh, ripple delete stay in there uh it wasn't a tight fit so i still have an uh there so i'm gonna go ahead and cut the uh out too all right so now it's just like stay this. in there it wasn't a tight fit it's a little bit of a hiccup right there so we can press command t and it should add a crossfade you can bring the crossfade down a little bit about four in there it wasn't a tight fit gives it a now, little bit of smoother cut maybe two because brings in a little bit of the audio from the next track let's stay in there it wasn't a tight fit sounds a lot better so that works so crossfade helps fade audio so it's not as harsh of a cut and it can help you know have a smoother transition to the next scene that's basically how you cut that up so i'm just gonna end this clip there since i'm not gonna actually be editing the entire video 
but you know, rip and delete the end. So let's say this is my entire full clip. This is gonna be my YouTube video that I upload. Now, if you do notice, it is in the 16 by nine format, which will be, again, a standard YouTube upload format. But if you wanna do the two by one like I do, you can go to retime and scaling. And again, this is gonna be different in all softwares. You usually can, you know, zoom in with the effects or whatever. You can go to fill and it should fill the clip perfectly. If you're gonna fill it in, you're gonna wanna make sure you do it on every clip. Usually it's best to do it to like all your footage. So what I usually do is I'll select a few clips. I'll go over to project settings and fill that way when i drag them into the timeline let's grab four for example it's already going to be filled automatically by itself so an easy way to crop in all your clips all at once if you already put them in the timeline is by selecting them all and then click fill and then now all your footage is cropped in so now that we have the entire video up if we want to we can add titles now i want to emphasize the word lord since i am technically a lord now to prove it i have my lord proclamation card that's besides the point now we can like emphasize the word lord by using titles so the first thing you want to do is go over find the part where i say lord I'm be lying a lot in scotland so i will be earning the lord title so Lord, the Lord right here, Lord title. So what I can do is I can go over to the effects panel and once it's selected, it'll pull up all these tools right here. You can have your video transitions, audio transitions, generators, effects, da 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 da. But titles is where we're gonna go to. I personally like the jitter effect. If I click and drag it to the end of my playhead, and I'll just crop it down a little bit because it's not gonna be a long title. I can click on it and then we can change it to say Lord right here under the text controls. And so now when it plays out, You're earning the Lord title. I Oh, that's a little too short, so I'll drag it out just a little bit more. So I will be earning the Lord title. Again, it's still a little too short, drag it out a little bit more. And so I will be earning the Lord title. I that looks fine, we can place it where we want so to. I will be earning the Lord title. I hire Perfect, title. Lord title. I cut it right there and then uh now we have a title some titles don't do that effect some do i just you know that's what this one does so now we go over to the settings and then we can go to we can zoom in the text if we want to be a little bit bigger and then we can position it a little bit left if we want to which i don't see why maybe at a little bit of an angle now let's say we, i want to use the same title the same way it's set up now all i have to do is click option and drag and then it'll make another it's title and it'll say the same thing now i can change the word to say you know say i wanted to say error and I say I want to bring it to the end of that one. So now it'll say be earning the Lord title. I hired a, a realtor to be here. Any now you can place this anywhere you want. You can tweak it if you want. It won't affect the previous one made. Uh, everything will just look beautiful. Let's just say that's the end of my video. I did my outro. You know, I have little effects, whatever at the end. I'll probably make videos on that in the future if y'all want to see that. Now, if you do feel like I am going a little bit fast, if you comment down below, I can try to explain it in better detail. Or if you want to learn something more, I can get into that in another video. But now we're going to want to export the video so we can go down to our little export tab and then we want to title the video i like to title the video what i'm gonna like actually title it on youtube so when i upload it i don't have to worry about retitling the video so let's just say this is going to be lord eric example so we can you know click browse so this is where it's going to export the video to so we need to find the folder we made earlier because that's what we use to organize so once you find it you know it's better to name the file so you don't have three untitled folders like this but i know it's two because that's what i used earlier i can go to the social media tab we made and i did already do this whole example once because um camera died on me so i had to restart so now we can just click save yeah i'm gonna replace it since i've already done it on accident all right so now that we have our video location found we want to make sure all of our settings are right so the first thing i want to do is make sure it's on quicktime now you can do mp4 if you want but i prefer quicktime now you also can do h.264 h.265 they both work h.265 for me just exports a lot faster but, you know you do you can make sure your video format is the same as the timeline settings you did earlier and your frame rate is also the same now if you were to add chapters like this marker right here is a chapter if you click this it'll also export with this now if you want to have chapters you want to make sure these markers are labeled properly because these are what the chapters are going to be named i believe I honestly won't know until after i upload this video so we'll, we'll find out <laughs> Now, once you have your chapters made, it'll look like this. But for this example, I'm not going to do chapters. So now I don't know what any of this shit does. Like I said, I'm a professional. That's not really professional. So we're just going to ignore that. All right. So now that we have all this ready to go, everything looks right. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what any of that means. We can now render out our video. So the first thing you want to do is click add to render queue and obviously click replace because I've already done that. And then now it's going to have this video here. Now, let's say I wanted to make a social media clip out of what I've already put in the timeline. And let's say I want to know I want to use this clip so I can click I. So it'll put an input right here. And then I say, I want to go to the second clip and click O. So that adds our in and out. So it's only going to export what's in the in and out point. So now I can put Lord Eric example social. And this way I will know it's a social media clip. So now I click add to render queue. And then now you're probably like, oh, I have to render one video out and then I have to make sure I remember to render out the second one. No, all you have to do is select both, click render two. 
and it's gonna render both of them at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but it's gonna render them back to back without you having to re-render again. And it's gonna put it all in the folder that you saved them to. Now, once that's done, what I like to do, instead of having to go find it in the folder, I can just right click, click reveal and finder, takes you right to the folder you just made. And then now you have this clip. All right, guys, I know I've been gone for a while. The entire clip. Fuck. And then you can go to this one. It was like a pro good, we can record. But it's the second clip I made, and then boom, that's all you gotta do. Now both of your videos are ready to be uploaded to YouTube. You should know how to do that already. I can't help you with everything. Actually, I can if you want You know, want me to help you with something. Again, comment down below. But yeah, that's all that there is to it. If you want, you can go make your damn public interviews that nobody's gonna watch. As long as they're not kiss or grab videos or you know, kiss or slap, I'm okay with it. You do those public interviews that inform people. But if it's a, that bullshit, I don't wanna see it. But yeah, if there's any video editing tips or tricks you wanna learn, comment down below. I can either answer them in a comment or I can try to make a video or a reel or something like that just to explain it to you and uh get you that content out as soon as i can but yeah make sure y'all go follow my personal and my business instagram down below if y'all want to see my portfolio my gondola is down below too i know gondola not, probably sounds weird but it, it, trust me it's cool but yeah i hope this video helped you get a better grasp of how to edit a video and if not i'll just go fuck myself